two dirt bikes, some extra cargo room, and a whole lot of forest. Today, these two motorcycle enthusiasts left the pavement and entered the BC backwoods. Somehow, the two managed to carry nearly everything they'll need for the trip. A tent, sleeping bags, food, fuel canisters, and even some high-tech video equipment. I'm going to uh, attempt to shoot a documentary promoting the sport of off-road riding. As a sport, off-road dirt biking is often criticized. So a new group now representing the sport has banded together to make some changes. And this trip is all part of a plan to bring about some positive recognition. They're calling it Off the Map. Uh, I think we get uh, lots of recognition from, from the people that matter. We also get lots of flack. Off-road riding in general has, has always uh, been getting its fair share of bad news. But we're trying to reverse that. We're trying to show that this sport is geared toward the family. It's geared toward uh, people who like to get outdoors. It's the environmental impact that's most often the reason for criticism. The presence of loud and polluting motorbikes cutting through BC's forests isn't always well received. But these two bikers say they want the environment protected just as much as anybody else. In fact, if we don't have an environment, we have nowhere to ride. There's a lot of stuff that goes on out there, and uh, I don't think anybody is blameless. And I think we all have to share and shoulder. The bottom line, say these two trailblazers, is that off-road motorcycling is good for BC. In Kelowna, Jeremy Hunka, CHBC News. called Grizzly Fall. As you can see, it's uh, pretty spectacular and uh, aptly named because apparently there's a lot of grizzly bears around here. So we're going to camp a little further down the road. Take the west side of the Fraser River up to Lytton, take the current ferry across to Lytton, and, uh, and then unfortunately I think we have to uh, pound some pavement because the uh, Kupiki Pass road is, is closed. This is a little incident, it's nothing serious. I obviously couldn't get through the sand. Coming down that hill, it goes absolutely nowhere. And a crash. Looking up, I uh, looked up BC Ferries and looked up the Lytton Ferry, and the ferry is uh, currently closed due to high water. The other option, which is the one I prefer, would be to go back down the road here and head up to Lytton, and then from Lytton up the west side of the Fraser all the way up to uh, Lillooet. And then from Lillooet, we have to do pavement all the way back to Vancouver. But it is such a beautiful trip up the west side of the Fraser, it'd be a shame to miss it. Whoa, the pace! The pace is way too fast. So fucking down. Okay, so the plan is, is that uh, we have to cross this creek. And our plan is to go down here, straight across, back up the bike, and then go up there. Now we're gonna get it all on film. How you doing? I'm David Locke. I've uh, been riding up here for the last 35 years. As areas started closing down and our access to like a former military base which got fenced off and uh, that was when we found Vetter Mountain. Vetter Mountain is located between Chilliwack and Abbotsford and it's bordered by Cultus Lake in the U.S. border. We have the first in North America where we have a cooperative effort and a stewardship association of all user groups and it's been recognized across North America as a model uh, that will, will be the future for a lot of local recreation areas. So we do our own signage. Uh, it's all out of our own pockets, out of our own volunteer time that this area is managed. Do we hug each other now? <laughs> uh, I came up with the idea in Mexico when uh, we didn't have any pesos for the uh, for the dryer at the motel we were staying at, so uh, we found this worked extremely well, actually. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
You should see it on high. <laughs> <laughs> In the biking community, it's known as uh, the tailing spawn, and it's about uh, what, 13 kilometers north of Hope. The only uh, thing uh, that we've heard in the last couple of years is the natives want to take it all over. With uh, forestry at the one area, they blocked a, an area off that we'd used for years because they said there was too many people using the area. In my opinion, that means we need more areas. I think it would be better for the province. Now explain to us why you have a rock on your shoulder. Well, it's a... Uh, rock rolling is kind of like a sport. <laughs> it's very important you try and pick a good rock. Unfortunately, we don't have any round ones around here. Now, it has to be done safely, you know. There's very high standards for rock rolling. And uh, one is you don't want to strain your back, herniate yourself, or drop it on your toe. All of those things could be disastrous and, and furthermore, bring a bad name to the sport. And before you know it, the bloody government's going to be banning it on us, right? So, and, 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 and another major concern, a lot of people seem to think that rock rollers are irresponsible and they don't check out where they're actually rolling the rocks, right? Well. We have GPS this entire area, and we know specifically there's no hiking paths, train tracks, road crossings, or fish habitat. So, so in this, this would be considered a safe place to rock roll. Okay. So, well, we're off course. Deduct points for that. I consider the province my riding area. Now you start to drive a couple hours at a time to go anywhere to riding league. I'd like to see us get organized uh, so we can protect our sport for our kids and generations to come. This piston run here has been going on 50 plus years. If my understanding is correct, it started off and used to race from North Van to Vancouver. Now uh, it used to be Bush. <laughs> I drove up here because you guys have the most fun, technical, challenging events left on Earth. We can't do this in the States. No, why not? Environmental laws and whiny riders. We can't go down steep hills. We can't go up steep hills. We can't make any ruts. We have to stay out of all the water. We have to build bridges everywhere we go. The, the, the U.S. Forest Service is closing trails somewhere every day. Yeah. What are you doing about it? Whining. I love it. Yeah. I'm a diehard. Put me out there, wipe yeah. out, get back up, do it again. So, <laughs> so there's room there's room for dirt biking and women together there, huh? Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, do well, you we think? can do anything men can do. You can do anything men can do. Yeah, they're tough. Let's put this I put this section in here in 70. In 70? Yeah. Can I ask how old you are? I'm coming up 69. In fact, I don't recognize any of this. I recognize some of it as it gets over there. On the, on the other side of the clear cut, I, I remember. But this, was, was, this wasn't clear cut? No. Something's fucking with me, man. Oh, <laughs> sorry. You know, we are going to go into this trail. It goes in right here. Uh, it's called Graveyard, because uh, there's a few bikes buried right. in there, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to go across some of our, of our bridges that we've uh, built recently, over some, not necessarily creeks, but over boggy, soft areas. And this is Crown Land. Yeah. Some of it is in Blue Mountain Provincial Forest. And there's a couple of woodlots on there, and um, there's been some environmental issues lately that we're having to deal with. Um, trying to do the right thing by that and building bridges over the stream crossings and whatnot. For the Blue Mountain area, it's so close to uh, the urban area that uh, we're really under the microscope here. We really have to try hard and to be seen to be trying hard to, uh, you know, to be doing the right thing. 
like say why the club oh, was started right. was to, to organ, organize uh, basically right. a group of people that doesn't like to be organized. Dirt bikers are a pretty free spirited lot and it's, uh, it's tough to get everybody on the same page. <laughs> I hear shit all out. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go slow but We do have a riding area, and here we are today up at the uh, the lower part of Brome Ridge near Cat Lake campsite. District of Squamish drafted a bylaw prohibiting dirt bikes from all trails and all dikes within their boundaries. Uh, this area is uh, slated for possible development to become a ski area, yet another ski area. If that happens, then we uh, stand to lose this riding area to uh, golf courses and condominiums. Ho ho ho! Are you okay, buddy? That's a newborn, you think? Yeah. I think, I think it's a little more serious. I don't think that's a newborn, buddy, because... <laughs> I've seen this before where they lie down, they crouch, and they don't move. Hey, Terry, what do you know, every, every fucking thing? I just told you a story of what I witnessed before, you fucker. I'm surprised you didn't get off your bike and shoot it. This is Belcara right here, Port Moody. Uh, Indian Arm, North Van, and we're riding right in here. That's, that's where our clubhouse is. <laughs> Basically, the, the, bite, uh, the bike is very light. It's 160 pounds approximately or less. <laughs> Tires on the, on the back of the, the bike are very soft, pliable. You run about three pounds of air in the back. Trail ride with it. You can hill climb with it. It's so much fun because they're so light, they're so nimble. They're basically a, a mountain bike with a motor in it. Tim Barker, Cornell Cross Country Motorcycle Association. We're gonna just call ourselves a Cornell Cross Country Club, but uh, everyone thought we either skied or ran, so we had to add Motorcycle Association on the end of it. But the problem is, is that there's, this is still an attitude that we're in the wild, wild west out here. People going where they shouldn't be going and cutting trails where they shouldn't be cutting, and part of it's dirt bikes, part of it's ATVs. Just you just kind of get labeled sometimes because um, there are a few people out there and that uh, kind of paint a bad picture of, of us. And uh, again, that's part of why we formed the club, is trying to show that there are responsible people out there that ride motorcycles. Uh, the trip has been uh, A1. Uh, everything has been going according to plan. Uh, Terry and I are getting along pretty good. Two more weeks of this stuff to do. We're uh, gonna go up to Prince George and get our tires replaced, and then we're going off to the Alaskan border. It's gonna be hell up north. Yeah, so far so good. Very strong again. We, this is probably the best turnout that Prince George uh, Motocross Park has ever had. A little bit far out, um, you know, you know, half an hour away from the city. But um, if we move it any closer to Prince George, then we got the noise bylaw happening. There's a few people that think it's a pretty dangerous sport, which it is. Right now, it's very healthy. Yeah, we had uh, we had double the riders here almost this weekend than we did in last year. And um, it's it's very healthy, very positive sport. The future looks great. I think it looks great. Hey, buddy. Just for the record, uh, Terry is uh, changing my brake pads, living up to his his title as uh, official mechanic of off the map. What do you think of uh, dirt bikes on the road? I wish I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, sprung a leak again. Yes. Another seam crack. Yes. Another crack in the seam, huh? We have JB Weld. It works marvelous. 
Well, apparently not, because you keep using it and it keeps springing. No, but it leaks in a different spot. <laughs> Once I have the whole tank completely encased in JB Weld, we'll be bomb proof. <laughs> Forecast calls for snow. Wow. We are off the map here, literally. I get along with Canadians just fine and uh them, uh, me and lots of Canadians on the other side wish they'd just erase that line. You'll see lots of guys carrying guns, especially this time of year. Besides that, it's an American right. We can carry it anytime we want to. Yeah, what do you think of the fact that we can't do it in Canada? I think it's sad. Canadians seem to be more accepting. And I don't mean that as an insult. Uh, it just seems to be something you're trained for since childhood. Where we're more rebels. This is perfect grumpy weather. If there's a day to fucking be grumpy, this is it. So you think I'm grumpy? <laughs> no, you think I'm... Go ahead. Re repeat what you said about the guy with the music. Why does he have to play his music so loud? Particularly Julie Andrews. <laughs> I'm not even you, sure which you. vehicle it's coming from, but I, you know what? It's coming from that. I place. highly suspect it's that guy. Over here, buddy. I'm right over here. Yeah. If you, okay, just stand still, buddy. I can't stand still. I just got off my bike doing 120 <laughs> kilometers an hour. There's logging for you. <laughs> what's, what's your name? Oh, Fred. Hi, Fred. I'm Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Thank you very much for that push. Yeah, you bet. Hey, happy Canada Day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Everybody from Canada Day. How are you doing? Not a bad view, eh? Wow. No, that. Is a keeper. Well, that's west. Huh? That's west. Yeah. Well, that's the east. That's north. So, what do you think of the beard, man? Yeah, it's on cricket. I'm, I'm hoping that with this newly provincial organization, B um, that we're able to change public's opinion of dirt bike riders. Today we did mandatory sound testing. It's the first time that we've ever done it. We take on the adage that if we're not heard, we're, uh, we're nobody's problem. I'm not sure if you're familiar with new legislation that was passed in the Forest Practices and Range Act. It now creates an avenue for someone to be fined up to $100,000 we have one major issue that is an accelerated harvest level of the timber within our riding areas. And this is primarily due to the mountain pine beetle within all of our interior forests. But part of the big process is having people like our local clubs get out with these guys who are actually out there hanging the ribbon, developing the roads, doing the logging, to go out with them and actually say, hey, these, these are the trails we want to keep. They have to get out now and say, hey, this is where we go now. This is where we want to continue. I'm, uh, my name is Jamie Riga, and I'm the owner of Selkirk Mountain Helicopters in Revelstoke. So we're going to start by uh, heading over to the Revelstoke Dam. It's off our uh, 12 o'clock here. So this is the start of uh, Lake Revelstoke, and it travels from the top of this dam to the bottom of Mica Dam, uh, about uh, 150 kilometers by road. The Mica Dam is the first dam on the Columbia, and it's a generating station, and then Revelstoke Dam is as well. And both are also uh, for water control um, for the levels of the Columbia as it flows down to, uh, well, eventually the uh, Pacific Ocean. Basically the main town site of Revelstoke uh, is on our, on our left, on the left side of the river side and on the right side it's called the Big Eddy and we have the three bridges the uh, first one is the Trans Canada the middle one is the CPR and 
uh, the third one is, uh, I believe, the original bridge um, from the Big Bend Highway on the Trans-Canada Highway. And it's a one-way uh, bridge that changes directions every, depending on traffic flow. It's called Downey Street Sawmill, and it's um, been in the town. It's probably the biggest employer in town. If we're doing a scenic ride, if we do, we go um, up to Mount Begby, which is the uh, large mountain with the glaciers you can see from town. It takes a bit to get used to, you know, there's 22 year round residents in town and uh, there is some adjustments to be made for sure, but uh, we're the only inland temperate rainforest in uh, North America right here and that's what uh, helps draw, you know, such a great snow belt in the winter time. Uh, last year we got 32 feet of snow that fell in town, uh, which was pretty remarkable. It takes, you know, a certain individual that wants to live out here and, uh, you know, you're either out here, you know, for the nature and the beauty of it or you're out here because uh, you want to live on your own. and. It definitely brings a special person to Trout Lake. Got one of these the next time I was going to go on a biking trip in case we broke down. You'd just be a skeleton in the morning, eh? Yeah, it'd be just, you know, you got hardly any meat on you anyway. You'd just be picked clean. But the mosquitoes didn't eat. There wouldn't even be left left for the buzzards, never mind the bears. So, you know, this way, one of us would be around to tell the story. If i sort of handicapped and it still gets me back into the back country. And matter of fact, I've been trying to uh, convince Trails BC to have handicapped people be able to ride the Canada Trail. If you've got a handicap card, like you hang in the car, hang it on your quad and go. And they say the quads uh, destroy the trail. And there are certain parts of the trail which aren't suitable for quads. I didn't mean that uh, handicapped people, people ride every uh, trail, but at least the railway grades. Well, we're here to do a little mining. We were looking... Are lights on? No. Are we on now? No. Yeah. Now, if you look up there, see the glistening? Yeah. What do you think? Should we mine here? Are you getting scared? <laughs> Motorcycle. Yeah. Exhaust noise makes rocks start to fall. Hello, Terry. Hello, Kelly. Go to the light. Hello, and welcome to Friday, July 6th. The border with the United States. You can't read it, I'll read it to you. Treaty of 1846. Line established 1857-1861. Surveyed and marked 1903-1907. And there you have it. Here is our Canadian border. And God knows how many sensors we probably set off. Well, we'll probably have a few roadblocks waiting for us along the way. Wait!
road. Now, seeing that this is a widely used trail, you have to respect the signage, the speed limits, and the other users. Because many would tell you that motorized vehicles are lucky to have access to this trail. Others would argue different. To exemplify your problem, I had left a chocolate bar as a tip to the uh, chambermaid. And uh, you insisted that that chocolate bar come. So that's how much you love chocolate. You won't even leave it behind. In this country, a chocolate bar is generally not considered a tip. <laughs> so I was strictly worried about our good name. Make a mess of the establishment and then leave them a chocolate bar. <laughs> as, a, as a token gesture of, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that may work with your wife, but with the chamarin. Grand Forks. On a Monday morning, July the 8th. Grand Forks Hotel, famous Russian food. Don't say. The old Duke of Boy Mansions. Yeah. Yeah, they owned all this in there. Probably still do. But those were quite the, quite the place, apparently, there. So what's the problem? So our intentions were to uh, go from Creston to Salmo, except we just ran into this one minor problem. The road's gone. It's down there. So we have to go back. Now there's miles and miles and miles of road up in here. Oh, Lots yeah. of bugs too. Lots of bugs. Yeah. In case you're wondering what that uh, that sound is, that's the sound of a chainsaw. Hello, Terry. People who live down the street, they try to chainsaw us out, and the chainsaw got stuck. So everybody's stuck. Nobody's moving until we get another chainsaw. You seeing a lot of, you seeing a lot of trees falling these days? Ron Phillips. Ron Phillips, eh? Where are we, Ron? You're at 26 kilometers from Yak. Oh, it's beautiful up here. It's beautiful country. Oh. No. How can you get lonely up here? There's always something to do. A bad day up here is better than a good day at work. It costs a whole $150 to join Bikorma. Mm -hmm. We're on um, uh, sort of centered in between Trail and Castlegar and Nelson on the, uh, the Bombay Pass. Government land tenure. It's about 550 acres. This facility is here because, you know, basically uh, as dirt bikers, it's uh, it's a tough go trying to trying to ride and have fun and do our thing. And, and uh, um, we needed a place that we could develop and build and have something here instead of just trying to poach crown land. I think we're really servicing a need, um, a, a need for riders to have a place to come and also uh, helping out the public in, in town, in the different towns around here uh, in trying to um, lure riders away from uh, just the local backyards and stuff like that. So I think I think everybody's winning in this one. What do you do with the drunken sailor early in the fall? Hey, if she rises, hey, if she rises, hey, if she rises early in the morning.
say goodbye to off the map, saying that you won't. Goodbye off the map. That's the end of the show. <laughs>